I thought you, will in, you were going to enjoy seeing these uh, several distinguished looking gentlemen that, uh, st that started the, 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 the consideration of uh, climate change and uh, greenhouse gases. John Tyndall, uh, there is a paper published now, uh, there is a paper published now just about 150 years ago. Uh, he was a mountaineer, he almost was the first to climb uh, Matterhorn. And, uh, and of course, a very successful physicist, scientist. And uh, he had the idea to look into the reason for, for various uh, temperatures, climate situation in mountains, and had the idea to check absorption properties of various gases. And to his surprise, he found out that uh, carbon dioxide and water vapor have uh, are, are most efficient absorbers in, in the infrared, uh, contrary to expectation that uh, things were going to be equal in infrared and in visible domain. Uh, Swante Arrhenius, I don't know how to pronounce this uh, properly, have, have, have no Swedish friend to, to check, to ask. Uh, 30 years later, he looked into possibility that it could be carbon dioxide uh, that uh, had, has an impact on uh, climate changes. And he spent, it, it, it is a most uh, demanding calculation, he spent more than a year calculating what would happen if the carbon dioxide content of the atmosphere doubled and uh, ended up with the, with the oops ended up with the result of five to six uh, degrees. That's too much. Uh, but uh, he's, uh, as, as I said, the first to do the work. Guy Callender, just before the World War II, he, he was the first to use actual measurements of carbon dioxide. Uh, the, the carbon dioxide was I increasing at the time, and, uh, uh, and, but not, not much compared to what's going on today. And, uh, and Earth was warming. And uh, he calculated uh, that uh, the warming observed was probably a result of increased CO2. Uh, that was, uh, we, know, we, now, we know today that was, uh, that was wrong. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, the gradual some increase of Earth temperature prior to World War II uh, was a result, uh, it is now considered, of a uh, relative uh, lack of, of volcanic, major volcanic eruptions. Uh, as, you, as, we <clears throat> as we all know, during World War II, it, it became quite cold. Okay, uh, Charles Keeling, just after World War II, he spent two years measuring carbon dioxide in, in Antarctica and uh, Mauna Loa in Hawaii, and, uh, and uh, saw that uh, carbon dioxide increased considerably in the short period of just two years. And that was a warm, warm, <coughs> warning sign, and uh, his measurements uh, continued, and they are continuing to, today. And uh, this is the famous uh, Keeling curve. You can see carbon dioxide going up and up and down uh, during the year. That's because uh, there is much more land in the northern hemisphere, and uh, so, so, so in, 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 in within one year, uh, carbon dioxide goes up and down, but generally it goes <coughs> up very decidedly. So, as you can see today, it is more than 390 ppm parts per million by volume as opposed to the pre-industrial value, which was uh, uh, 270, 280. So, so a considerably increase of carbon dioxide is taking place. Temperature, global <coughs> Earth temperature is increasing at the same time and uh, goes up and down more than, more than carbon dioxide, but generally it goes very much up, very, very uh, systematically up uh, during the past, uh, well, since about 1970. That comes from uh, uh, Goddard Institute for Space Sciences in New York. It's available on the on internet and you can check the, the latest uh, plots and uh, various stories there. 
it's an update of a paper of figure that's published in uh, Jim Hansen et al. 2001. Okay, so what is uh, in store for us? Uh, it is a very, very, it, it's a question of, of, of course, a lot of interest and a very crucial question. There are lots of climate change skeptics, as, as the term goes, and uh, one of those was uh, Richard Mueller, or Mueller, uh, and he is uh, the author of this uh, op-ed uh, contribution to New York Times uh, earlier this year that created some waves uh, because uh, he, he's, he sort of uh, uh, he said, said uh, mea culpa, I was wrong, and, and uh, that makes an impact. He was, uh, he, he, he in, in, uh, he's a very famous physicist, uh, I think a Nobel Prize winner or, 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 or so, his, his collaborators or he himself. He came up with this plot. He was uh, suspicious of uh, the, the ability of atmospheric scientists to do the, the right uh, mathematics and analysis. And he, he, he organized a project uh, at uh, Berkeley uh, and uh, came up with this result. There, this GIS, uh, Goddard the plot, is just one of several, uh, there are several places that are very careful, very systematically following the, the Earth temperature. And uh, the point here, the main point here is that uh, the, the differences between those uh, analyses of the Earth temperature are not that, that great. It's not a simple, statistically speaking, uh, job because various meteorological stations are unevenly spaced. So one needs to correct for the, for the uneven space distribution, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, where do we go from here? What happens as a result? Sea level is uh, very much in, in the center of attention. See the measurements. Uh, there is this International Panel of Climate Change and it's got its predictions. The gray area is uh, encompassing various predictions. Uh, there are measurements from gauges and then uh, lately from satellite observations and sea, sea level goes up. Uh, but uh, the numbers here are not that impressive. See that these are centimeters, like uh, so and so centimeters uh, more than uh, this uh, reference value. This comes from uh, so-called Copenhagen Diagnosis, which is available on internet. Uh, this is a paper published online. There is also a book by a bunch of eminent climate scientists uh, who, have, uh, who have summarized uh, knowledge since the latest uh, IPCC report. The latest IPCC report was published in 2007, and the next one is expected next year, 2013. Uh, the problem, th this is of course very pre precise, these are very precise data, but the main thing is uh, uh, this is mostly because of the warming of water, uh, but uh, uh, warming of water is very slow. So, so that's just a sort of a precursor of things that, that might come. Uh, what we do not know is what happens with the considerable amounts of ice that are accumulated in various places in, on the globe, uh, uh, like Greenland, etc. There is a lot of ice. And uh, what, will happen, what will happen as we go on? Uh, one thing that is monitored quite, uh, quite uh, intensely and with great interest is the ice uh, coverage of the Arctic Ocean. Here again, you have uh, various forecasts uh, done by IPCC models. And uh, uh, see, there, there is a prediction that by the end of this century, in summer, uh, there will be no ice in Arctic, but things are going much faster that way. These are observations, and there was this uh, quite, uh, well, quite impressive minimum in 2007. Here's 2008, 2009, 2010. Uh, there are two years after this plot was done. It com this comes also from Copenhagen Diagnosis. And uh, 2010, uh, the melting was still uh, greater. And 2011, 
sorry, sorry, 2012, maybe you saw in various uh, news, newspapers uh, and reports, uh, there was a dramatic uh, greater melting of Arctic ice. Uh, see the plot, uh, which shows various years. 2007 was the minimum I talked about, and uh, this is 2012. Uh, and uh, uh, the minimum occurs in early September, normally, and maybe even always. And uh, the melting continued, and this is the plot showing 2007, the minimum before that time, and this is the minimum of 2012 of this year, uh, which was, look at the numbers. Uh, the, uh, this is the me median of, uh, median of, uh, oh no, average, 79, 2000. Uh, there is 8 million square kilometers. Uh, this year, September 16, it is only about 3.5 million square kilometer, kilometers. So, the, so it's just about only half of the, of the average coverage of, of uh, Arctic Ocean with ice. And here is a picture of uh, the situation, September 15. This is the North Pole. And uh, this, uh, this uh, reddish, uh, well, reddish, whatever color that is, line. I hope everyone can recognize colors. There are people who, who have problems with colors. <laughs> uh, so so see, see, there is this median line of uh, 79, 2000, and look, it's just about half that much of the Arctic that's covered with, with ice. Why is that so important? If you look at satellite pictures, satellite photographs, uh, water is, is, uh, is just about black. Why is it black? Because it reflects so little of Earth radiation. And ice is white because it reflects the, the sunlight, uh, almost all of it. So, uh, if there is no ice, uh, there is uh, much more warming taking place, so there is that so-called positive feedback. And it's quite strong positive feedback, and uh, that is something that uh, really points which way things are going. The crucial thing to, to take account of is that uh, there is a tremendous inertia for, for the water of the, of the Earth ocean to, to adjust to, to forcing. Water needs to be mixed up and takes 1,000 years for the water of the world oceans to, to, to turn around. To, so, so we are unfortunately impacting climate for generations to come. And uh, I, I'm afraid we are not going to be uh, in, uh, well, there is hope, but uh, hope is, uh, is vanishing quickly. Uh, we are likely to affect the climate of the Earth for, for centuries and centuries to come, and not in a good way. Uh, there is lots of ice on, on, on Earth. See Greenland. Uh, this is the topographic map, map of Greenland. Uh, ice is shown only uh, when it is uh, thicker than 10 meters. So, so there is, of course, always ice here. Uh, 3,200 meters is the elevation here. Is that ice or is it just a little ice? To understand, it's good to look at the topographic ma map of Greenland without ice. Look, how, see how it looks. Uh, the, the elevation of land is, is underwater here, under ice, sorry. So, there is three kilometers of ice, and uh, that ice is melting, and it's melting quite quickly. That can be measured. See the measurements of ice, Greenland ice sheet, various assum two assumptions here, Antarctic ice sheet go goes down, both of those, and uh, see that this is something that we know little about, how fast uh, the ice, uh, the, the, the ice uh, masses are melting. Uh, there are two assumptions here, five year doubling time and 10 year doubling time. Uh, that means uh, the, the, the amount of ice that melts, uh, one assumption is that it doubles in five years and another that it doubles in 10 years. Both is quite, uh, quite uh, worrisome. So how can, we, how can we stand on firmer ground? What will happen? 
a lot of information, and strangely as it, may, as it seems, the best information about the property of the Earth, Earth climate system, comes from paleoclimate. We had, uh, we had a, a meeting uh, on, on, the, on the anniversary of the birth of a famous scientist uh, coming from this part of the world, Milutin Milankovic, and uh, there is a, a proceedings volume just out recently, and that's a plot from the proceedings volume uh, from a paper by Jim Hansen et al. And it shows the, the change of temperature during the Cenozoic era, that is 65 million years back. Uh, see one thing, Th this shows Antarctic ice sheet. There was no ice on Earth at the time, in, 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 the, in the early Cenozoic. This is the beginning of Antarctic ice sheet, and this is North Hemispheric ice sheet. Starts quite recently, starts forming quite recently. There was no ice on Earth until uh, the carbon dioxide uh, went uh, below four, five, 450 ppm, 450 parts per volume, roughly. Uh, this is known pretty accurately, it, it, plus minus 100, but that's, we, are, we, are, we are increasing carbon dioxide quite quickly. And, uh, and gradually after this maximum, there, there is this PETM, Paleocene, Eocene thermal maximum, uh, the pe people pretty well understand that the, the, the amount of carbon dioxide was increasing uh, during this time, and then it started gradually decreasing from this time on. And as it did, the Earth temperature was going gradually down. Uh, this latest part is expanded in the middle plot, and then uh, the la la last part of the of the middle plot is expanded in the bottom plot. We are here, we are, we are living in what's called Holocene, and there is the Eemian, one warm period uh, 100,000 plus years ago, and there is Holsteinian here. So, so these are good things to look at to learn what are the properties of the Earth climate. I, pr I probably should, should uh, go faster. Temperature, uh, no, I can see, I should go faster. Temperature change from this maximum to today, uh, sorry, to the, to, to the maximum of last ice age is 14 degrees Celsius. That's a huge temperature change. What can, what could have produced this huge temperature change? Uh, there, there are various uh, options look, look at, uh, looked at astronomical forcing is only plus minus Zero, Milankovitch forcing so called, so called frequently, is only 0.25 watts per meter squared. Uh, doubling CO2 on the other hand, it's a, it's a straightforward calculation. Just, just doubling results, uh, it produces 1.2 watts per meter squared. However, there are, there are feedbacks. One feedback I talked about is the melting of ice, uh, or melting of ice sheets. With uh, this and water vapor, uh, which is, uh, there is more water vapor when it gets warmer in the atmosphere, uh, um, comes to about three watts per meter with slow feedbacks, five to six watts per, per meter squared. So that is a lot. Uh, what could have produced uh, the warming of 14 degrees other than carbon dioxide? Uh, people have looked into position of the continents See, uh, uh, in early uh, Creta end of Cretaceous, 65 million BP, that's when there were no dinosaurs anymore. And at present, uh, uh, that uh, has an impact because it, uh, the, the Earth uh, climate depends on where the continents are. Continents have moved. But still, that's less than or about equal to one watt per meter squared. Uh, sun uh, uh, gets to be looked at. Uh, over uh, during this period, uh, see, because our sun is a relatively young star, that sounds good, doesn't it? Uh, during Cenozoic radiation has increased some, so that's uh, that's the uh, impact of opposite signs. So carbon dioxide uh, uh, is left as the only candidate to have produced this this uh, gradual cooling uh, that is that has some any credibility. It is uh, instructive to look at things. Uh, a little back, uh, I mean, little for this sort of talk. Uh, there, during Eemian, that, that is the warm period before present, 
uh, here, uh, it was a little warmer, uh, but less than one degree Celsius uh, uh, than uh, at, at the peak, than the peak Holocene, the present period. We know pretty, pretty well that, that sea level was four to six meters higher uh, than, uh, than it is today. That's a lot of meters. In particular, if you look at the, 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 the television coverage of the recent storm in, of hitting New York. Uh, Hansen et al. Et al talk about tipping point, point, tipping point, point of no return, etc. Point of no return is, it means that even if we reduce carbon dioxide emission, we can't go back anymore. Uh, hopefully we are not that far, but uh, there, there are things that are not known, tropospheric aerosols. Uh, they reduce, uh, they, they have a negative feedback. Uh, but what does that mean? That means we, we have one hope uh, of, of reproducing pollution. That, that, that really doesn't sound like a good, good idea because it will have our health. So Hansen et al. and the many uh, along with, with them, uh, a bit of a language change. <laughs> but I will speak English. Uh, they, they, they tell us that uh, the, the only way out is, uh, they advise that the only way out is to reduce uh, the carbon dioxide to something like 350. I don't have the number there. Anyway, 350, how can we do that? Uh, the, the main problem are power plants that burn coal, but they are the cheapest. No one wants, very few people want to build nuclear reactors, and there is hardly anything else. Uh, wind and, uh, is, is wonderful, and uh, etc., but that produces uh, little, little power compared to humankind's needs. Okay, what happens with water, finally? I show some results. Uh, they are available, so I will not spend much time. Uh, this, this comes from one model, uh, so-called ETA model, uh, and also Princeton Ocean model. Uh, one model that was born in Belgrade and uh, then transported to United States was sort of a reversed technology transfer. Uh, and uh, these are integrations by Djurjevic and Rajkovic. Uh, you have here uh, winter, December, January, February, and summer. It's hard to read because, uh, uh, but mostly, uh, of, of course, the, it's precipitation. Mostly uh, over Serbia, there is less precipitation, uh, and uh, both, in, both in winter and summer, there is less precipitation. These are calculations for the last 30 years of, the, of this century. There are others, this is much more readable. Uh, this is, again, this is uh, once more for 71 to 1000. Uh, temperature, it is very much warmer. We, we are looking at more than two degrees and that's pretty catastrophic uh, warming. Uh, and uh, and uh, this is the, the precipitation. You see it's all brown. Uh, in, over Serbia, it's not that, far, that much brown, but uh, less than 10% uh, uh, to 15%, etc. It's, it's so. Uh, that this is now a different scenario. There are these IPP scenarios. This is the so-called A2. Uh, the picture is similar. Strangely, it is well, it is similar qualitatively, but uh, there is less decrease in precipitation over Serbia. A lot of decrease over Italy. And uh, that is uh, kind of out, an outlier. This is the result these, peop these uh, two, two, peop two people obtained for the, for the present 30 years, 2001 to 30. And uh, interestingly, here over Serbia, it, th there is not, uh, there is not uh, a visible decrease. In fact, a uh, little increase some places, even though it is very much warmer. Uh, that is not, Clear, clear why that much difference. Perhaps because the greenhouse gases have not decreased that much yet. Uh, but then I have uh, to end this, uh, this presentation of results. I have results for Circe. Uh, Circe is uh, this Greek lady. Uh, it's an acronym, of course. Uh, uh, E6 project, that was a four-year project. 
Anyway, there is a book in press, I, I, uh, uh, and the uh, uh, next picture comes from chapter two by Silvio Gualdi and many co-authors. They have run four, uh, they have run six models. See, there is a various atmospheric components and the global, some had, had global and some used uh, uh, one of those, the, those three at the bottom and Mediterranean Sea. This is the first time that models were run uh, con, uh, 400 years ahead and uh, nested uh, Mediterranean and high resolution, both uh, Mediterranean and atmospheric models. And this is my last plot that shows the results. Uh, the, here there is a separate result for winter and summer. See DJF, winter, northern hemisphere winter, JJA, summer. And uh, the, the, there is also significance test done. Gray areas have a significance more than 80%. And uh, in the winter over Balkans and Serbia, there is a mixed result. Uh, there is a increase uh, to the northwest and reduction to the southeast. Uh, the, the numbers here show contours for a change in millimeters per month per decade. Uh, it's too much information for, for you to absorb in, in, in half a minute or so. Uh, but uh, see, the, in, in winter, res the result is mixed over this particular region. But in summer, there is a definite uh, drying trend, minus 1.5 here. And it's just all minus. And these are results for the first half of this century. So it is it's, it's a result for, for kind of now. So uh, over Serbia, drying. In, in summer, just where, just what, uh, just when we need more rain, and <laughs> so it doesn't look good. So we need to adopt and uh, be ready, and uh, hopefully contribute something also to reduction of of, re of, re of release of carbon dioxide, uh, which goes unabated. No one, no politician in in, in major countries will be elected if uh, he or she starts advocating uh, r reduction of, of carbon dioxide very intensely. I have no thank, thank you slide, but thank you anyway. <laughs>